Hello, everyone. Welcome to Flow and Restore Yoga. Uh, my name is Michelle Chua. And for this practice, if you have two blocks, you may find them useful for at least the vinyasa flow portion. Um, you might also want to have a strap, a pillow or bolster, and a blanket. Let's start in any comfortable seated position. You may like to sit up on your folded blanket or your pillow for your comfort. So we have been reviewing the eight limbs of yoga, highlighting different practices from each limb. And we're now going to highlight the third limb. And that third limb of yoga is called asanas. This is according to the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. And asana, as many of you know, is the physical practice of yoga, which includes the postures and the movements. Here's an excerpt from Meditations from the Mat about asana. It starts with a quote from the Yoga Sutras. Asana is to be seated in a position which is firm but relaxed. The earliest visual image we have of asana is an engraving of a person meditating while seated in an advanced posture. The relationship between asana and meditation having been established centuries ago. Some have described the postures or asana as preparation for meditation. Others group some asana for meditation and some for physical health. Still, others consider the asana to be an end in themselves. I experience them as separate practices, each with its own benefit. I practiced meditation before I practiced asana, but now I see asana as a highly effective way for Americans to prepare themselves for meditation. We are a restless bunch. And a year of steady asana practice lays a solid foundation for the typical American student who wishes to begin meditation. Of course, you should find out what works best for you. So this section deals with the asana or the work we do on the mat. The emphasis in the, uh, is in the above translation of the Yoga Sutras is on the asana being steady and comfortable. Two important qualities of yoga poses. The practitioner is to be firm but relaxed. Many new students have trouble with this. Many students become, tend to be unstable and panicky. Later on, having bagged a few postures, many students become striving and ambitious. Still later, these same folks become hurt and disillusioned. This is because we tend to approach our postures the way we approach our lives. In our culture, results get all the attention and the process is overlooked. Approach both your life and your postures with an eye to the process and let go of the results. Stand easy in all the postures of your life, firm but relaxed. It's interesting to look at our physical yoga postures and how we practice them ourselves and how they can be a metaphor for how we attempt any of our daily life situations. So as we start the physical yoga practice now, I invite you to be attentive to how you enter poses, sustain them or transition out of them. And just observe what is your energetic approach, your mental, emotional, physical approach. All right, let's begin by checking in with ourselves. You might close the eyes as you start to mentally scan your physical body. To notice any kinds of sensations you're experiencing without having to judge them as positive or negative. Becoming more aware of your physical state. Start to notice the qualities of your breathing. And in the way that you're breathing, how do you feel energetically right now?
And then begin to notice your mind. What is the state of your mind? What is the state of your heart emotionally? Let's start to breathe in a little deeper through the nose. Breathing out slower through the mouth. Inhaling even slightly longer. Releasing everything through the mouth. And on your own, continue to deepen your breath. And I invite you to call to mind a few things that you're grateful for. Awakening your heart with gratitude. Identify for yourself what you would like to cultivate through your practice today, setting your intention or saying your personal prayer. And then is there someone that comes to mind to whom you'd like to dedicate today's practice? Extending loving kindness to another being through your efforts here. Let's set our intentions and dedications while creating resonance by chanting together three ohms. Let in a deeper breath. Uh... Ah. Uh... Let's continue breathing slowly and inviting an evenness to the breath so that you're inhaling as slowly as you're exhaling. And then start to whisper the breath very gently by closing your lips if you can, only breathing through the nose and softly constricting the back of the throat. This is called ujjayi pranayama or victorious breathing. A way to breathe that regulates your energy inviting calm, focus, and balance. See if you can keep this gentle sound rhythm going through much of our physical yoga practice, especially the vinyasa flow, as we'll be moving to the breath rhythm. So we had a request today to Physically focus on releasing tension in the neck, the head, and the middle and low, uh, the upper and lower spine. So let's begin in child's pose, bringing the inner edges of your feet together to touch at the rear of your mat. Let's separate the knees generously wide here, as wide as you're comfortable, and then let your pelvis sink down to your heels, stretching your arms forward. So it's an extended version of child's pose. Rest your forehead on the ground and draw your shoulders back. Lengthen the top of your head forward. And spreading the fingers wide, palms flat on the floor, arms straight without locking the elbows. 
Continue to listen to your breath. Imagine breathing in through your lower back, wide across your sacrum. Climb the breath up to your middle back. And then visualize breathing into your upper back and your neck and shoulders. And if at any time you need to pause or rest, you can come back down to this position however many times you need. Let's start to rock forward onto our hands and knees. Now having your shins parallel as your knees are hips distance apart. Let your knees be a couple of inches behind your hips as you stack your shoulders right above the wrists. Pressing the palms flat in the earth, breathe in and start to glide your chest forward, rolling your shoulders back and down, gaze up, entering cow pose. Breathe out as you contract your abdomen, dropping the head slowly, surround your back into cat pose. Let's keep going a few more times, inhale coiling your chest open, lifting your gaze. Exhale, lifting your navel in towards the spine as you drop your head to round. Try maybe another three or so cycles of Bidalasana, cat, cow pose. Listening and pacing your movement to your breath. At the end of the next exhalation, tuck your toes and lift your hips as high as you can while pressing your thighs back, bending your knees, keep the hips high and start to press one heel into the earth, straightening that leg. Pause and breathe here. Relax the neck. Press the ground away with your fingers flat as you lift the shoulder blades back and then Set the opposite heel to the floor, straightening the other leg, bending the other knee. Let me try that a few more times, just slowly pedaling your feet in place, warming up your hamstrings and calves. You might even explore swiveling your hips to the left and to the right while you pedal. Can you let your head hang as loosely as possible, relaxing especially the back of your neck? And see if you can relax your jaw, remembering those two important qualities of asana or yoga postures, steadiness and relaxed quality. Start to walk your feet forward to meet your hands at the top of the mat, separating your feet at least hips distance apart. Parallel your feet and bend your knees so much that you can easily drop the head and relax the back. Take hold of opposite elbows and start to sway the spine side to side. Breathing in fully. Breathing out through the nose. You might even add shaking your head no to help loosen your neck. Nodding your head yes while you float your shoulders up away from you. Tilt your weight as far forward as you can balance. Knees can be very bent here. And plant your fingertips either on the ground, two blocks, or your shins. And pressing that firmly, inhale, lengthen your spine forward, engaging your abdomen as you glide your shoulder blades back. Keep leaning forward. Now exhale, hinge from the hips, dropping your head. Let's try twice more. Press with the hands. Inhale, stretch your chest through your upper arms in half forward fold. Exhale, drop your head forward fold. One more time. Inhale, press with your hands. Lengthen the sides of the torso, sides of the neck. Ardha Uttanasana. Keep lengthening as you exhale to fold Uttanasana. This time, bend the knees a lot more and drop the arms, drop the head. As you breathe in, slowly roll your spine upright like you're stacking one vertebra at a time. 
And when you get towards the top, circle your shoulders back and down. Lifting your chin parallel to the ground. Bring the hands behind you to clasp. Let's open up the front of the shoulders now. See if you can hug the heels of your palms together. And if it's hard to lift the hands away from the lower back, if there's not much range of motion, grab a strap and hold the strap as wide apart as you need between the hands with the thumbs pointing away from the midline of your body like this. Now, breathing in, drop the shoulders behind you, lift your chest, bend your knees and exhale as you bow, imagine you're creating a flat back. So bend the knees as much as you need to as so you don't round the back. Now, as we stay here a few breaths, you might continue to move the head, loosen the neck, stretch your arms further away from your lower back while bending the elbows slightly to lift the shoulders up away from the neck. Let's tune into a few more breaths. You could even sway the spine side to side here if you'd like. We're gonna take a shortcut right into our first series of sun salutations, sun salutation C. So lower your fingertips outside of your heels and on your next inhale, step the left knee behind you and gaze up, kneeling lunge. Hold your breath and step into your plank pose, whether legs straight or knees down. Exhale, lower your knees, then your chest, then your chin in Ashtangasana. Inhale, slide forward and soften your shoulders back in a gentle cobra pose. Exhale, tuck your toes. Lift your hips high, press the thighs back, downward facing down. Inhale, step your left foot beside your left thumb. Lower your right knee and gaze up. Exhale, step your right foot forward and fold. Press to the feet. Inhale, sweep your arms forward, rising all the way up. Draw your shoulders back. Lift your heart towards the sun. Then exhale, join your palms in prayer from crown to heart center. Second side, inhale, sweep your arms forward, roll your shoulders back and down. Exhale from the hips, bow. Plant your fingertips on the earth. Inhale, step the right knee behind you, gazing up, kneeling lunge. Hold your breath as you step to plank. Exhale, lower knees, then chest, then chin, ashtangasana. Inhale, slide forward and draw your shoulders back, cobra, bhujangasana. Exhale, lift your hips back, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, step the right foot beside your right thumb. Lower your left knee, gazing up, Anjaneyasana. Exhale, step your left foot forward and fold. Press to the feet. Inhale, sweep your arms forward to rise, lifting your heart towards the sun. Exhale, join your palms at your heart center and reconnect with your intention for this practice. Let's move through a variation of sun salutation B. Please step your feet together so that the inner edges of your big toes touch. On the next in breath, bend your knees together to touch and sit low into chair pose, gliding your weight towards your heels as you raise your arms up, Utkatasana. Exhale, shift forward and hinge from your hips. Press the ground, block their shins. Inhale, lengthen to half forward fold. Exhale, step into plank. And this time, lower knees, chest, shin, or glide forward through Chaturanga Dandasana, hugging the elbows in. Then choose either cobra or upward facing dog as you breathe and draw the shoulders back. Exhale, lift your hips to downward facing dog. So here's the variation. Keep the hips leveled. Inhale, raise the right leg behind you. Exhale, bend the knee towards your nose and softly land your foot beside your right thumb. Stay high on the ball of your left foot and inhale to rise up to crescent lunge. Then turn to your left into warrior two, spinning the left heel down, align right heel to arch of left foot. As you inhale next, flip the right palm up and side bend towards your rear wall, peaceful warrior. Exhale your hands to the ground, continue to lower into your vinyasa. Breathe into cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale downward facing dog. 
try to keep the hips level. Inhale, raise your left leg behind you. Exhale, bend the knee high towards your nose. Softly land the foot beside your left thumb. Stay high on the ball of your right foot. And inhale, rise to crescent lunge. Spin the right heel down, aligning heel to arch, warrior two. Open the arms. Next inhale, flip the left palm up and side bend towards your rear wall. Peaceful warrior. Exhale all the way down from plank. Continue into your vinyasa. Follow your pace of breath. Downward facing dog. Let the body be still as you steady your gaze on one spot. Tuning into the breath as you lengthen and balance in without. Feeling the sense of both important qualities of a yoga posture, steadiness and ease. Last two breaths here. In Adho Mukha Svanasana. You hear the word asana in the, word, in the posture. When you've emptied this breath, walk or lightly jump to the front of your mat. Feet together in Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, half forward fold. Exhale, forward fold. Bend the knees together. Inhale, Utkatasana, chair pose. Exhale, join your hands in mountain pose. From here, let's turn to face the wide width of your mat. And from both hips, rotate your thighs to turn out. Externally rotate the thighs. Now pivot the feet to turn out only as much as your knees can turn out. And then bend your knees in the direction of your middle toe underneath. And just sway a little side to side as you warm up your inner thighs a bit more in this hip opening wide-legged squat. Press your hands into your inner thighs to encourage them to splay open while you sink your hips, lifting your frontal hip bones in the back of your skull, relax the shoulders. Inhale here. As you exhale, dip one shoulder forward as you twist towards the opposite shoulder and look up. Let's flow to the breath. Inhale, center. Exhale, switch. Dip the other shoulder down, forward. Look over the opposite. Let's try one more on each side. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist. Inhale, center. Let's stay here for a few breaths. So continue to splay the inner thighs apart. Draw your tailbone downward. Slightly lift the frontal hip bones and lengthen through the back of the skull. With your chest broad, relaxing the shoulders. Let's raise the arms up while you sink the hips down, bringing the interlacing the fingers except the index and victory mudra. Tune into another four deep breaths. Release the arms and rise all the way up to stand. Heel toe your feet close enough together until they're about hips distance or wider apart and just shake out your legs. <sighs> shake out your arms, shake out your shoulders, anything that needs a little stimulation of blood flow. Shake that out. You might even do that with the tongue by fluttering the lips. And I'll meet you sitting down. I invite you to sit in hero's pose if any version of it works for you. So you might sit directly on your calves like I'm doing with the toes pointed back. If your knees are feeling sensitive to that, you can either grab a block or pillow, place it between your ankles to sit on, or take a blanket such as this and place it right up against the backs of your knees to support the bend in your knees. If none of the versions of hero's pose works for you, sit in a way that you can be upright for a few minutes. So make sure it feels steadiness and easeful, steady and easeful. All right, so let's lift up the back ribs. You can even manually place your thumbs on your lowest back ribs. And as you're lifting the back ribs, can you let your pelvis become heavier? Press the two sitting bones at the bottom of your pelvis downward 
while you lift your back ribs. Feel in the bottom front ribs. Mm -hmm. Feel a slight engagement of the abdomen. Now keep lifting the back ribs so you're actively stretching your lower spine. And then let the fronts of the shoulders soften slightly back and then melt the tops of the shoulders down. Lift through the sides of the neck. And imagine for a few breaths that you could breathe in up the spine. So from the base through each vertebra, like you're creating a little more space between each, all the way to the crown of the head. And as you breathe out, feeling the spaciousness down the spine. A couple more breaths. Inhaling from tailbone to crown. Visualizing the breath move. Exhaling from crown all the way down to the tailbone. See if you can make this last breath here a little slower. Continue to breathe slowly and we'll start to move the head gently into a circle. So dropping your chin down to your chest. Keep listening to your breath. Sway one ear to drop towards one shoulder. Take your time lifting the chin and rolling the opposite ear to the opposite shoulder. Try another circle in this direction. Going as slowly as your body needs you to go. And then when you're done with that rotation switch, go in the opposite direction. Relaxing the muscles on your face, like around your eyes, your tongue. And then take another rotation in this direction. All right, let's get a little more active on our neck, neck stretch. So reach your right arm as I'm marrying you around your back. Encouraging this right collarbone to splay open from the sternum and then bring your left hand to the right side of your skull and without pushing not so much by force but just encourage the left ear to fall down towards the left shoulder feel the weight of your uh, left hand on your head and just gently resting it as you start to shake your head no really slowly looking down towards the left armpit still breathing deeply then looking up towards the sky and just continue to shake your head a couple more times really slowly so you can be attuned to the different sensations as you move through the range of motion. See if any of the degrees of this movement is where you need to be still for a few more breaths. Whether you might be looking up or down or midway through, pause there and breathe. Relaxing your jaw, relaxing your tongue. And letting your shoulders soften down. One more slow exhalation here. Release both hands down. Slowly lift the top of your head to more neutral position. Just pause there. Notice how the sides of your neck feel. Let's take a long audible sigh through the mouth in lion's breath. So fully inhale through the nose. Stick out the tongue, open the mouth. Ha. Ah. Okay, close the lips again. Let's wrap the left arm behind your back. Encourage the left collarbone to splay from the sternum. Bring the right hand to the left side of your skull. Gently drop the right ear towards your right shoulder. 
feel the natural weight of your right arm resting on your head and begin to slowly shake your head no. So looking down towards your right armpit, listen to your breath and then looking up towards the sky. Pay attention to how your neck feels throughout this motion. And at what point of turning your head do you feel the most happening where your body is inviting you to stay? Find that angle and let's pause there for several more breaths. Can you let each exhalation encourage a deeper sense of release, letting go of any gripping, especially in your scalp, in your neck, in your jaw, your face, your shoulders. Breathing out, letting go. Embracing the energy of non-gripping. Release. One more long exhalation here. And release both arms, lift the top of your head, come back to a more neutral position in the cell and just pause, notice what you feel anywhere. So not only do our approaches to our asanas tell us about how we move in our daily lives, but also what we're carrying in our bodies, what we discover areas of holding tension, chronic uh, patterns that we notice. There's a lot revealed in our bodies. So notice what you notice with non-judgment. All right, let's give it another lion's breath helping to clear out any stagnancy or remaining tension in the neck and shoulders. Gather in a deep inhale. Any sound, let it out. One more time, deep, deep inhale. Release. Okay, let's bring the legs in front of you. Stretching. Uh, your left leg forward, step the right foot on the floor, just in front of the right hip here, holding on to the shin with both hands, root your sitting bones down, see if it's helpful to sit up on a folded blanket so you can lengthen the spine more easily. Let's prepare for a spinal twist. You can have the right foot in front of the hip, you can go a little deeper into the setup, setting, crossing the foot outside the left thigh or knee. You might even go further by bending the left knee too, but make sure you're choosing the setup that allows you to equally ground your left and right sitting bones and to lift up comfortably to the spine. Backstroke your right arm and place the fingertips behind the pelvis. Press down with your right foot and your pelvis and raise the left arm as you breathe in. Sit up a little taller. Let the chin be parallel to the floor. And as you breathe out, keep the legs still and rotate your ribcage to the right. Lower your left hand to hold your right leg or to hook the elbow out side to thigh and then press into the earth some more. Lift up from the bottom of the spine. Imagine restacking each vertebra, top of the head. As you exhale, keep the shoulders relaxed. Continue to explore the depth of your twist. Try that for a few more cycles of breath.
One more deep breath here. As you exhale, unwind your spine, straightening your left leg in front of you. Let's come into half cow face pose. So bring the right thigh to cross over the left thigh as close together as you can. Either have a strap around the ball of your left foot flexed with enough slack so that you can relax the shoulders and sit tall, or you can have your hands on the ground alongside your left leg. Again, root down the pelvis, kick into the strap with the left foot if you're using one, otherwise flex the foot anyway, and lengthen through the spine as you breathe in. Keep your throat open and your shoulders relaxing down. As you breathe out, hinge forward just a little bit from the hips, pausing as you breathe in to root the pelvis downward while lengthening the spine up and forward. And then if you can fold without rounding the shoulders or the back, continue to fold breath by breath for several more breaths. So remember in Meditations on the Mat, which I quoted in the beginning, how it talks about honoring the process in our physical yoga practice. It's so easy to get hooked on, oh, well, this is the pose. This is how it looks like in the magazine. This is what it's supposed to look like. But the interesting thing to remember is that we all have unique bodies, right? We all have different conditions in our bodies and ranges of motion. So instead of looking at a mirror and saying, oh, is this pose deep enough? Can you maybe close your eyes and feel how your body is speaking to you within the pose, within the process of exploring the depth of the pose? Remembering we're not looking for any pain in a posture that can tell us that we're exerting too much force. There might be some discomfort as you're moving through tension, but finding the amount of discomfort that you can tolerate and practice being in while regulating your nervous system with deep conscious breath. which remember also affects the body and helping it to open up, feel safe to relax. And let's listen to one more deep breath here in Ardha Gomukhasana. Pressing your pelvis down, begin to lead with your chest. Inhale to slowly rise, remove the strap and stretch both legs forward. Take a moment to just pause here. If you need to shake out the legs, you can. Otherwise, just be still and feel into your body. How is it responding after one side of those two postures? You might also look at your asanas as having a conversation with your body, which entails both listening and speaking or communicating. And it's a lot of us practicing listening, right? Not to our minds necessarily, but to our bodies, especially. So let's bend the left knee, step the left foot on the ground, take a moment to plug the sitting bones down and sit tall. Now, if you can set up similarly as you did on the first side of the twist, go ahead and do that. So left foot in front of the hip or crossed outside of the right thigh or knee. Maybe you also bend the right knee. Backstroke your left arm, placing the fingertips behind your pelvis. Raise your right arm up, press into the ground, and lengthen through the spine as you breathe in. The shoulders relax. Now keep the legs still as you exhale to twist to your left. Lower your right arm to hold the top leg. Or hook the elbow outside the thigh. And with each inhalation, press down through the lower body, lift up through the spine. And as you exhale, continue to rotate the rib cage. Several more breaths here. Can you feel how you're balancing both a steady effort in this pose with easefulness, with relaxing in the pose? Can you feel those two things, the steadiness and the ease in your breathing as well? 
the way you're regulating your energy. Let's tune into a couple last breaths. When you're ready, unwind the spine and stretch both legs in front. Actually, start with just the right leg in front. And let's turn out the left thigh, cross it over the right thigh as close together as you can for half cow face pose. Now you might place the strap around the ball of your right foot flexed. You might have your hands on the ground framing the leg. Kick into the strap and flex your right foot either way. Root down to your sitting bones and lengthen through the center of the spine while relaxing your shoulders down. Open the throat, open the chest. Breathe in here. Just a little bit at a time. Exhale, hinge, forward from the hips. Inhale, root down through the hips, lengthen the spine. Exhale, you might hinge a little deeper. So breath by breath. Having the conversation with your body, listening to the sensations as they let you know how far you need to go or want to step back. And responding through your actions. Very much like meditation, I see asana, physical yoga practice, as deep listening. A practice of deep listening. What's wanting your attention here in this pose? And without judging that, just becoming curious about it. Maybe acknowledging how your body is speaking to you by breathing into the area that's speaking. Is there any area that's tensing up while you're here? Sometimes when I'm teaching in a, uh, a live in-person yoga class, I find people using their strap with so much force, like they're looping their hands and they're really trying to get a really big grip. Remember, that's it's a balance of steadiness with ease. So there's no need to like pull so hard. You just, you know, you bring into the give and take a little bit at a time. Last two breaths here. Press down through the pelvis, lead with the chest. Inhale to slowly rise up. All right, let's set up for Baddha Konasana, bringing the soles of your feet together to touch, bending the knees wide apart. You could prop your pelvis up on your pillow or blanket if you'd like. Take hold of your feet, and as you keep them together, root your pelvis downward, slide your heels as close to you as you comfortably can, and then lengthen up through the chest, lengthen up through the back of the skull while softening the shoulders down. Let in a deep breath. And similarly, like the last pose, hinge from the hips just a little bit at a time. You can walk the hands in front of you, you could place a block or a pillow underneath your forehead. I'm gonna be here for about two minutes.
Here, one more deep breath here. And press your hands into the floor. Begin to lift your chest. Breathe in, slowly rise. I'm going to invite you to set up in supported fish pose. If you have two blocks, you can place one block at the tallest height. Weight the rear of your mat to support your head while you lie back. And the second block on the second level height, the medium height, either across the width of your mat or tracing the midline of your mat. You basically want the block that's closer to you so that the closest edge meets the bottom tips of your shoulder blades so that it's supporting you to lift the chest and drop the shoulders while relaxing your head. I don't have two blocks, so another option is to use your pillow. You can even add a blanket on top to make it even thicker. And imagine you're lying off the edge of a bed, so your head is hanging down towards the floor. Shoulders are hanging off the edge. And you can either bend your elbows apart like a cactus shape. And you want to make sure it doesn't feel like it's stressing out the lower back, depending on the size and thickness of the pillow. You need to slide the pillow further up or down the mat. So take your choice of setting up. You want to feel like you're, you're really able to stretch the lungs, open the collarbones, the chest, while letting the shoulders relax down. And the shoulders are away from the ears. The, the neck feels long. And the back of the neck is also spacious. You're not tensing it. Legs can be extended forward because this will be our Shavasana, our corpse pose. Uh, you can have a blanket over your pelvis for grounding support. If you have a second pillow or another blanket to roll up, you can place that under the backs of your knees to support the lower back. So take a moment to set up in a way that you can support opening the chest, relaxing the shoulders, and letting your entire body be still and relaxed. If you have an eye pillow, it can be helpful to rest that weight over your eyes as you close your eyes. Now, once you settle into your Shavasana restorative posture, closing the eyes, I'll invite you into a few last deep breaths. To so focus your eye, your mind's eye into your belly and let the next inhale slowly expand and fill your belly. Holding the breath in at the top for a few seconds and see how long you can let the exhale last through the lips, even longer than the in-breath. While the belly softens down towards the spine and the bones of your body sink deeper into the earth. Let's try that a couple more times. So when you feel ready at your pace, inhale into your belly, gently expanding it, feel it rise. Hold the breath in for just a moment. And then when you're ready, exhale even slower out to your lips, letting the belly soften, letting the muscles in your body relax so the bones become heavier. And then try that one last time on your own. And then when you're ready, let go of controlling the breath. You might rest your awareness on the breath. Just being present to what you observe in your mind and body. Shavasana.
Notice how your physical body feels here now. You're sensing the effects of your yoga asana. Begin to gently wake up your body, starting with small, subtle movements, keeping the eyes closed. As you tune into however your body wants to continue moving, ease into simple stretches. You might turn over to your right side and pause, observing the breath, observing your energy. As you feel ready, gradually lift your body up. Please find a comfortable way to sit for five minutes sitting in meditation. You might keep the eyes closed as you're sitting tall and comfortably, maybe resting the palms to stack face up on the lap with them tips touching. You might choose an anchor to rest your awareness on to support the mind's attention being in the here and the now. That anchor could be the feeling of your natural breath rising and falling. Or that anchor could be a steady sound in your background, such as the ticking of a clock. If you notice your attention goes astray from your anchor or the present moment, as soon as you notice you've awakened, and honoring that, gently reguide your awareness back to your anchor or to this moment now. Remember that our practice is filled with moments of returning, choosing to return as many times as we need.
Notice how you're feeling now mentally and emotionally. I invite you to take a moment to acknowledge anyone with gratitude, teachers who have led you to your practice of yoga, the teachers before, who were their teachers, or any logistics and anyone who supported you being here now enjoying the fruits of your practice. Filling our hearts with gratitude. Look back on your intention that you set at the start of this practice. And remember to whom you chose to dedicate today's practice. And let's close, joining our voices chanting om three times let in a deep breath uh... Uh... Ah. Uh... Bowing in. The light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste. Namaste.